Male and female. Not male and male. Not female and female. Or, or oh, oh, my bad, it's a mistake. I really wanted a male, but I done put it in a female's body. Or I done put a female's uh, spirit into a male's body, so they should just mutilate themselves and transform themselves into the other uh, gender. That's madness. When, when, when the Lord created man and female, he said that it was good. Let me get there real quick. Hold up. I'll speak while I, while I find you. Where are you? You created male and female. That's it. This is, uh, this is Genesis chapter 1, verse 21. It said, and God said, which if you look it up in the Hebrew, it's Allahayim, which is us referring to the angels or the powers. So it should say, and the power said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the creepy things and over all creepy things that creep upon the earth. So the powers created man in his own image and the image of God or the image of the powers created he him, male and female created he them. And the power said, oh, excuse me, the powers blessed them, and the power said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. All right? Let me hop down to verse 31. Genesis 1 and 31. And the power saw that saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So when the Lord created man and female at the beginning, and he told them to be fruitful, all right, and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, that was very good. So why is America saying that the ways of the Lord is evil? Huh? saying that it's all right for two of the same genders to get it get it on all right you break it you break it the law statutes and commandments of the heavenly father and that's one reason why this place is going to be destroyed because they changed the ways of the lord into an abomination and the, and the things that, that that please their madness man all right and you so-called Christians in these churches talking about you love the Lord, but yet you, you passive or non, you, you're neutral on this subject, the Lord gonna destroy you too, man. All right? The Lord told you, read that again in Matthew chapter 19, when he said, uh, when, when, when God created them at the beginning. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse four. And he answered and said unto them, have ye not bread that, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Uh-huh, keep reading. And said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they and they, and they twain shall be one flesh. Uh-huh, keep reading. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. Yep. What therefore the Most High have joined together that no man put us on. That's right. So when they're joined together, all right, it's, it's by the uh, the decree of the Heavenly Father, which that was that proves the Native Americans, all right, are Israelites because they believed that marriage was, and the Mexicans believe this too, that marriage was ordained by the Great Spirit, that he was the one that set it up for a, for a man and a woman to get together to bring back uh, the sea, replenish the earth. Okay? They actually believe that concept. Why? Because they're Israelites. We know the so-called white man, he don't believe that. He believes in uh, Sodom, which is an abomination. So go back to Romans. Romans chapter 7, verse 2. For, for the woman which have not an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as she lived. That's right. So as long as her husband lived, she, according to the law, she's she belongs to him. Okay. 
she's not free to go and, and have sex with another man. She's supposed to stay with the first man that, that took her virginity, according to the laws. Keep reading. But if, but if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Man, if, if he died, okay, then she's free from that man because that man's, his spirit goes back to the heavenly father and to the spirit world, all right, the third heaven, and his flesh, it's going to decompose back into the, uh, the dust again in the earth. So she's free now to have another husband, all right, or, uh, or to deal with another man. Keep reading. So then, if while her husband living, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. She shall be called an adulteress, all right? And that's what America promotes. America promotes adultery, man, all right? They promote it. You people don't, because you think that the custom is, if the woman is married, it's because she done went through the uh, ceremony of walking down the aisle, holding hands or whatever, having some white dress on, her friends is there. You know, she's standing in front of a, a church building before some some pastor, and he said, I give you power by the state and before God and the state, yada, 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 that y'all husband and wife, it don't roll like that, okay? It don't roll like that, all right? Marriage is whenever that man, ha he has sex with that woman, okay? And it says if she's dealing with another man outside of the guy that first took it, all right, then she's an adulteress. Key reading. So that she is no more. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no more adulteress though she be married to another man. That's right, so that, that that's what qualifies someone to be an adulteress or a whore. Now to further prove that, all right, to show that those words are connected, go to uh, Hosea chapter one, verse two, and then hop to chapter three, start at the top. Hosea chapter one. Okay. Let, me, let me get this before you get there. All right, this is uh, Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter one, verse one. It says, God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. All right, now Hosea, all right, was a prophet, okay? And he was commanded by the heavenly father to go deal with a woman that would be considered an adulteress because she had already been dealt with with another man and everybody noticed and that man is still alive can you read, read that Hosea chapter 1 verse 2 2 the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea and the Lord said unto Hosea go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and of the children of whoredoms. Uh -huh. For the land have committed great whoredoms departing from the Lord. Now, this is one of the ways the Lord spoke to the children of Israel. Sometimes he had the prophets uh, illustrate through their lives or manners what was going to happen to the children of Israel so that, because our people visual, when they see it, they be like, okay, what's going on right here? You had a great example. You had Ezekiel. A lot of the things he did was uh, outward signs to, to demonstrate the fate of the Israelites. And Hosea was set up as one of those signs, all right, to demonstrate the, what will happen to the children of Israel. All right, so the Lord told him to go get him a woman that would be considered a whore or an adulteress, okay? All right, and have children with this woman. Keep reading. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Hilabna, which, which conceived and bare him a son. Uh -huh. From there, go to chapter 3. So he, he took Gomar. Okay, so it lists this woman, which was being a harlot. Okay? And Hosea's message is mainly uh, focused towards uh, the northern kingdom. Alright? 
which is you Latinos and Native Americans, okay? All right? Because when you read the history about the... the